What's up, YouTube? So we are carrying on looking at Zebralet 3 today. I'm going to try and not talk about too much of the game-changing features like I discussed in the last video. If you haven't checked that out, definitely go check that out. Today, I'm going to be discussing a little bit more of the kind of, let's just call it tamed down features, or at least these things that we're going to be doing today are not only solely possible with Zebralet. I think the kind of game-changing thing about this is that we're going to be doing all of these more complex sound design things with just a single oscillator. So today we're diving more into the world of like physical modeling. There were a couple of questions uh, on the last video about if you have a particular sound in mind, how you would go about crafting that sound w with the tools, basically. Less random sound design and more goal-driven sound design stuff. And so we're going to be discussing that today. particular comment in question brought up a clarinet so I thought that would be a good sort of source material to try and replicate today so for this purpose I've basically taken a sample of a clarinet and just cut out a single cycle waveform I think the interesting thing about importing these kinds of things into Zebralet 3 is that you don't need to know what pitch it is you don't need to repitch it it takes the curve and automatically works out the zero crossings and that kind of thing which just makes this kind of workflow a little bit easier so here we have uh, Zebralet 3 just an init patch and I'm going to drag in that sample which I've prepared it's what's going to load here is essentially just a copy of the sample I'll actually just load it into my DAW so you can see um, you could either go about just drawing it because it's not a very complex shape um, or you could cut a sample from your own clarinet a sample so as you can see here, there are a couple of sort of hiccups in the way that it's imported the sound. But we're going to clean that up by just kind of removing some of the shapes. So what I'm going to do is actually just import this clarinet sample here. And basically, it's just a, a single cycle that just repeats several times. Um, I then imported that into a wavetable synth to make it mono, but you could just use Audacity or whatever um, for that. I mean, timbre-wise, we're already not far off from a clarinet, but let's just remove a couple of these samples. So what I want to do is we can actually go into the editor over here. The shapes are pretty much the same, but the wonky thing about this kind of weird warpy behavior is essentially it's kind of placed some of the nodes apart from some of the other nodes. Like you can see here, there's a node here, and then it's up here. So what that does is basically shifting the phase of these uh, tables. And all we need to do is we need to jump into the morph section over here and just set them to crossfade or whichever one you want to use. I find crossfade for this kind of physical modeling style stuff works the best. So we can actually go in here and just set them all to crossfade. And so now we should get kind of more acoustic behavior. Okay, so here you'll notice that the sound itself doesn't really change over the sweep of this wavetable, and that's kind of what we want. We don't want there to be too much harmonic difference. We just want a little bit of, let's just call it like flutter or ear candy, so that every hit of the sound is not exactly the same. So the next thing to kind of get a slightly more realistic clarinet sound is we would want to set the global settings over here to mono, so that when we're playing two notes, it's only going to play one note at a time. And then I find I couple this with a little bit of glide, just for a little bit more realism. Okay, and the next big thing is the envelopes. So here we want to turn the attack quite high, because we want that kind of like sweep in sound.
For extra movement, we can set the envelope to control this volume knob over here as well, and then turn it down to get a bit more kind of control. So it kind of sweeps from silence up into the sound. Uh, some velocity as well. And then just a little bit of reverb so it doesn't sound so dry. Okay, so here what I want to do is I want to set LFO2. We're going to use this as our kind of slower LFO. I want to set this to the curve morph. And that's going to slowly change the shape of our sound over time. Okay, so for a little bit more realism, what we want to do is we want to apply a little bit of a faster LFO to the volume and the pitch. So what we can do is we can actually do that over here in the matrix. We actually have some extra modulation controls over here. So let's assign LFO1 to send to the tune and the volume like this. And then these become the amount of that kind of send that you want to set up. Okay, so let's go over here. Let's set this to 1S, which is seconds. And then this becomes the multiplier of that kind of seconds control. And then I even like to turn this down even more. I guess you can uh, hold shift and fine tune this setting over here. Um, but I find just turning the depth mod like mostly down here just allows you to only really allow a fine amount of modulation control through. So you can kind of barely hear that pitch. So for a little bit of extra realism, I like to use this disassociate. What this does is this basically just sweeps the phase a little bit. And so what I usually do is I will just turn it up a little bit and then I will use this envelope to kind of control it. So it starts with a phase shift and kind of lands on a more stable tone. Check this out. Do you see that? So you can kind of dial it in so that So that it kind of sweeps to a more stable tone, which is really nice. You don't really hear the difference, but it gives you more of a feeling of movement, I guess. Okay, so here I want to add a little bit of soft clip. Just to kind of make it sound a little bit more physical. Cool, okay, that's sounding great. So here what I wanna do is I wanna just add a little bit of spectral distortion in the expansion mode, this one, uh, just to the transient of the sound. So let's go over here to the MSCG and let's draw in a quick shape like this, right? And now we can assign this to the spectral distortion like this. You hear, you can, you can hear it goes, we don't want to hear that. So we can either turn this time base up to 16th. And that just gives us a little bit more finer control. You want to try get it in that attack to do that. Okay, so just for a little bit of extra realism, what we can do is we can say add velocity sensitivity to send to these two parameters here, right? So let's set these back to default and then use this as that amount. And so now the harder we hit the velocity, the more it's gonna apply the vibrato effect. Okay, so with this kind of thing, I like to add a bit of this plugin called Crisp, which is a free plugin, by the way. And then I will just mix it out a little bit using a effect rack, just to create a little bit of noise on the sound to give it a bit more of that physical nature.
Okay, so that's about it. I mean, you can fine tune it till you blue in the face, you know. But most of the time, I find with this kind of thing, it's just about a little bit of extra kind of EQ and processing in the chain. And in a big mix, you won't tell whether this is a synth or an actual cello, to be honest. If it's got some reverb and that kind of thing, you won't really tell the difference in a big mix. I guess it's also very important about the register or the octave in which you play it. So a... Did I say cello or did I say clarinet? Um... A, a clarinet is only uh, between, I think, C3 and C5, I think, or C2 and C4, but it, it's only able to create pitches within that range. So if you do pitches that are too high, it's not going to sound like a clarinet. And pitches that are too low, it's not going to sound like a clarinet. So stay around this kind of pitch. Of course, you get oboes and flutes, like the higher pitch and the lower pitch kind of sounds. Those will have their own tonal differences, but I guess you could pitch it down and get a kind of bassy sound using this technique as well. It's actually pretty sweet. Okay, so my next favorite sound that I like to make is these kind of more bell-like, plucky type of sounds. So what we're going to do is just initialize this preset. And this one is basically, uh, it's a lot easier to create because the basis of it is just a sine wave. And how we do that is we take the basic triangle, we just highlight all the points, right click and click on Cinematic or Sinomatic. And then this one, we actually want to duplicate this curve right so let's say duplicate selected and then we can delete this one so we basically have two sine waves if we change the curve morph nothing's going to happen right the magic here comes in if when we jump in here and we just scribble in some kind of random points here what we're essentially trying to do is just create kind of like a similar uh, fundamental tone with some noise in it and what that does is that gives us a very nice kind of plucky transient kind of sound to use to create these more bell-like, metallic-like tones. So here what we want to do is we want to set this to additive. We can max out the harmonics and we can max out the resolution. But this depends on your CPU. If you've got a kind of uh, maybe a bit of an older CPU, you may not want to max these settings out. But you will hear it does make a little bit of a difference to the kind of richness of the transient. Okay, so let's just hear what we've created so far. So here what we want to do is we want to create a envelope. We could either use the envelope over here, but I like to use this for the actual volume envelope of the sound. So we can just go straight to the MACG and just draw in a very tight curve like we had before in the previous example. And then here what we can do is we can assign this to the curve morph. Okay, let's make it really tight. And we can change the attack time as well. See, it kind of almost just sounds like we're adding noise to the transient, but we're not. We're actually, you know, it's, it's just a random curve, which we've just scribbled in there. Pretty interesting. Okay, so what I want to do is I also want to add just a bit of uh, distortion to the transient. And we can do that using this wrap and zap mirror over here. So let's assign the MSEG to this. Can you hear how that gives it a much more of a thonk? than just the kind of noise sound that we had before. Okay, so we're getting somewhere. Then what I wanna do is I wanna add some phase distortion. This does a kind of similar thing. 
And let's add a little bit of this to the transient as well. Let's give it some velocity. Let's give it a little bit of reverb. Let's actually dive in here and tweak it a little bit. What I also want to do is I want to create a velocity, which is going to change the amount of modulation that's applied to this MSCG over here. I think to do that, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to unapply this and create one here like this, and then use the velocity to map this amount like this. And so now the harder we hit, the more noise will be introduced to that transient. And then I also want to map a little bit of velocity to this release so that when it's a harder note, it rings out for a little bit longer. So we're basically done with the sound. We can uh, change it up a little bit if we want to create a couple of uh, variations on this using a harmonic clusters and then applying the MSEG to this amount. We could also perhaps map a velocity to the attack rate as well, so that it's a bit quicker when it's a harder, a harder hit. Yeah, that transient sounds very like a plucked metal tine or something like that. That's the exact vibe we want to try achieve. The delay in here is actually also very useful as a kind of like chorus. If you set the times of the delay really high and turn the diffuse up, you can kind of get it to act almost like a reverb or chorusy kind of sound. Yeah, that is cool. That is the vibe. The vibe. <laughs> okay, so the next technique I want to talk about involves a little bit more of the additive synthesis side of things. What I want to do is I want to use a source sound, something like the Duduk, otherwise known as the Dune 
sound. And I want to copy the spectrum of the sound and try and map it out with the curve spectrum system in Zebralet. This might be a little bit confusing for some, but the idea here is to, you know, in the previous video, I basically outlined the idea that like you can basically draw in uh, your spectrum. So if you draw the first harmonic, you get a sine wave. Uh, you can then draw in the second harmonic and then you get an octave up, etc., etc. Basically, most sounds that we hear can be basically deduced down to fundamental and partials. So if we have a look at a, a spectrograph, this is Flux Studio Sessions. There are free spectrographs out there. And we have a, a look at the spectrum of the duduk sound. You'll notice that there's these kind of four main bars and then kind of s s this kind of like noisy stuff on top. So we may end up splitting this into two instances of Zebralet. Um, just because of a couple of things that's going to make it a little bit more realistic. Um, but the idea here is to observe a sound's spectrum like this and then try to copy that spectrum into the spectrum editor over here. So like I was saying, we had that, those kind of four main spikes, right? Those are the fundamental and uh, the first three overtones and then depending on how you kind of draw them here that's obviously going to alter alter the sound and so like i said the kind of basis or the body of the sound is this right and then there's a little bit more complex stuff going on on top which we can draw in here but i want to actually do it in a separate instance because there's some kind of more noisy stuff happening in the other one and it's a little bit harder to isolate so just bear with me for this because it might get a little bit confusing but yeah what we want to do is we want to basically create a couple of these where we basically duplicate selected and then we just edit these partials a little bit and what we're trying to do here is just create a little bit of movement with the sound so that's ever so slight as it kind of like sweeps across that morph and then here let's just do uh, one like this, and now we can delete this one, distribute evenly, and now when we sweep, you'll see we get a kind of similar sound, but those uh, overtones are basically shifting slightly. And that just gives us a little bit of a kind of more, I guess, acoustic kind of sound. The additive system here, the kind of noise in the upper harmonics, if we have a look at the original Duduk sound on the spectrogram, you'll see that these kind of uh, four over here are more or less solid. And then there's this kind of like movement happening in the top here, in the higher frequencies here. There's this kind of movement happening. And you can slightly isolate the upper partials uh, with Zebralet. So let's just say, for example, I'm going to draw these in real quick. Like I said, bear with me, this one's a little bit more obscure. Uh, but let's just draw these in, right? And so here, using this chaos patterns, we can kind of create a little bit of noise on top. And then instead of full spectrum, we have some settings here, like one octave, four octaves to apply a little bit of noise, which basically shifts the pitch of each of those partials. Um, the trick here is to apply mod noise and then just adjust it ever so slightly. So you see, we've kind of isolated that noisy movement on the top, but it still affects a couple of these four main body bands, as, as I call them, because you know, even with one octave, you don't quite isolate it to the point where you have that exact control. Perhaps in the future, we're going to be able to do that. Or perhaps there's a way of curve mapping it individually. But that's uh, a little bit above my pay grade, let's say. Um, so what I want to do instead is I just want to not do it with this system, right? Let's basically just remove these uh, four overtones which we've created now and so now we just have the body which was those uh, those four original harmonics and so here we can actually set this down to 16 to maximize the amount of uh, resources so to minimize the cpu usage and we actually don't need any uh, modifiers or anything here 
what we can do is we can layer. So if you have Bitwig, all you need to do is control G. I'm pretty sure this it's the same in Ableton. And then here, what we can do is we can control D, which is just gonna duplicate that instance of Zebra. And so here, what we can do is we can delete these curves just to make life a little bit easier when we jump in here. And now we're gonna take these harmonics down and we're just gonna add the overtones, but in a separate instance. And so now when we trigger the sound, they're both gonna trigger at the same time. But now we have the ability to create that kind of noisy stuff on a separate layer, do you know what I mean? So obviously this is gonna be the power of Zebra 3 as opposed to Zebra Let, multiple oscillators, noise generators, modulators, and that kind of thing. But we can kind of fake it until we make it, if you know what I mean. Yeah, you can hear we've kind of isolated those upper harmonics there. So we can simply just add some noise this way. Or we can be a little bit more clinical with it using that same technique which I was explaining, using the chaos patterns, a little bit of mod noise here on the spectrum distortion. So the harmonics that we added now, they're a little bit loud. So what we can do is we can actually just jump in and turn the patch volume down like this. Let's give it a little bit more movement. This random seed basically randomizes the pattern of noise that gets applied to those upper harmonics. So you can kind of just mash this until you get the sound that you want. And so now what we can do is we can actually go into the effects over here. Let's add a tool and I want to create an ADSR or an envelope after that layer. And so this gives us the ability to basically create like a fade in, do you know what I mean? So here we can turn the attack up. I actually wanna use a segments instead of the ADSR because we can actually get a little bit more clinical with it. I also want to add a little bit of distortion just before the BCA that we've created. We can turn off the filter. And then I want to add a different layer here. What we can do is we can actually just add Bitwig's test tone. And then I want to set this to white noise. And we can just use that to kind of add a little bit of hiss to the sound. Okay, we may wanna jump into the zebras and actually turn them to mono, just so that they're not double triggering when we hold two notes. And then finally, we can just add a bit of chorus and reverb to give it a bit more of a physical kind of sound. I guess the beauty of doing it this way is you get a little bit more synthesis control and you can also pitch the stuff up and change the envelopes without worrying about um, affecting the quality of the sound too much. Of course, it's not going to be exact. You know, the best way to do that is going to be to, um, you know, multi-sample the stuff. You know, no synth is going to be um, acoustically exactly accurate, you know. I think multi-samples is the only way we're going to be able to do that. But until then, I think physical modeling is just about as close as we're going to get. And tools like Zebralet, uh, and specifically Zebra 3 when it comes out, are going to make things just, yeah, so fun to experiment with and create sounds that either don't exist in the real world or model sounds that do exist in the real world by just using the simple tools that are built in there, you know, dragging stuff in, um, drawing some shapes and doing all these kinds of more simple things. So anyway. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm going to be uploading these three presets to my Patreon for all my $5 supporters. So if you want to know what that's all about, check out the link in the description. And yeah, thanks for watching. If you haven't yet, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that like button. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.